right, well, I'm here today with Dale Earnhardt Jr. And uh, thanks for joining us on Around the Track. Stepping out of the car, uh, moving into the booth, and having a baby, all these things. So, what, what, I mean, what's that experience been like for you? Yeah, it's been a lot. Um, I really didn't know what to expect when I got out of the car. I didn't know, you know, racing takes so much of your time and, and your thoughts, you know. And, and so I didn't know without racing how much I'd want to work, how much time I would have to do those things. I didn't know what the broadcasting job was going to be like, whether how much you know, weekly preparation I would have, really what, how much work was that right, going to be. Right. I took on this idea of writing this book and didn't know really what I was getting into there. <laughs> and and congrats on that. I mean, yeah. I, I, I've seen a lot about, you know, you being so candid and revealing a lot yeah. that it, it, it's going beyond just motorsport. So congrats on yeah, that. Yeah, thanks. I've always kind of, you know me, I've always sort of been pretty transparent. I feel comfortable. I feel better, more peace of mind just to pour out the truth or tell the truth about anything I've ever done. It, it gets it off my chest. It's not my problem anymore. Right. You know, it's you know, you figure out how you feel about it, but I've gotten it off my chest, and so um, that was gr- that was great to 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 write that. Yeah, and and being a ba- being a dad, <laughs> you know, you, you, people will tell you a million things and try to help you and try to get you to understand what's going on or what that's going to be not like. Until you feel you experience it yourself. I don't even you know I don't even try to talk to new dads or expecting fathers or parents about it because I know that it does no good you know I just uh we uh are hands-on me and Amy are hands-on with Isla and so we're there and we're both parenting all day and you know I have to take off and go do this or go do that but when I'm home I'm parenting and uh you know she wants a break or she wants some help and and so I've been enjoying that I've been changing diapers and putting her down and taking baths and doing all those things and I love getting her up in the morning. You know, yeah. they're happy as heck to see who oh, yeah. right? <laughs> so that's like the best time. They're super yeah. in good, they're in a great mood. Um, it's been busy, and, and I think that now that I know, I think I was just really unsure about the broadcast, and what was that really going to, how much time was that really going to take up, especially since we split the season? Right. You know, what, do I, what am I doing the other half of the year while you're working? Sure. You know, I don't know. So uh, I learned all that this year, and now I think I'll be able to tune on what I'm doing away from the house a little better this this coming season. Well, I thought you did great. I Thank mean, I, I I'm I am curious to know that first race, that first race at Chicago, because I know mine was the Daytona 500. Yeah. And I was shaking, and just sweating, man. I was so nervous mm-hmm. about even though you have some buildup to get to the Daytona 500 the way that schedule works. But you, man, this bam, here comes Chicago. I know you had this, the year to think about it, but yeah. once it really happened, what what was that experience like? As, as much as I'd love to call, knowing what I know now, but uh, as much as I'd love to call the Daytona 500, uh, the fact that we kind of are in the middle of the year and that season's been going was a big help for me. Sure. And uh, it, it already jumped, tells the yeah, story a lot. I yeah. kind of knew what was going on. Mm-hmm. I knew kind of what, what was happening and, and knew we'd have good content. I didn't know he was going to have as good a race as oh, we had. Oh, well, you had right out of the yeah. bat. <laughs> I mean, that was, right. that was the That was a lot of people don't, you know, a lot of people don't know how much easier it is to talk about a race when it's that exciting you yeah. know and so the race was just delivering and the drivers were delivering and that continued throughout the rest of the year but anyhow i, I we did some mock broadcasts i uh we did about four of those basically we take y'all's feed sure and do a broadcast over the top of it and that helped a lot to sort of uh you know get some real criticism and i told the you know, my bosses and everybody I was working with my producer, I said, just tell me the truth. Just just give it to me straight and just hammer me with the real stuff, you know, and don't worry about my feelings or anything. Just tell me the truth. And so, because I wanted to get get better as quickly as I possibly could. But, you know, after a couple of weeks, they quit doing this. But the first week, they opened the door for me. You know, they would, they would say, they would almost say, here's an opportunity for you right, to get in right. on this conversation. And they would help me get involved. Now, after about two or three weeks, they're like, you're on your own. We're calling our race. I'm going to call the races. I see it. You're going to have to work to get in here. And I realized, like, man, I got to get aggressive. Right. There was, like, a couple races where, like, at Pocono, the first stage at Pocono, it was, when the stage was over, I was so mad because I didn't feel like I ever talked. And I was like, you guys, I wasn't saying this, but I'm thinking, man, they're not, they're not working with me. I, like, I can't get in there 
And so the second stage and the third stage, I was like, I'm just going to force my way in. And I did. And I was way more aggressive about trying to get into the conversation and talk and say the things I want to say and sure. say what I'm seeing. And they didn't care, you know, and, and that's just the way you got to be. And they told me that. I didn't get it when they when they were trying to explain it to me when the season started. But they were like, you got to push your way in here. You're going to force your way in here into the conversation. We're not going to wait on you to, right. to say, you know, hey, you got anything to add? You know, <laughs> that's not going to happen. <laughs> but, and, and, and it's a true team effort. That's what I like about it. I, th- I thought the transition – from a race team to the broadcast team, what I liked was that it truly was a team effort that you had to work with them. And and there's a fine line between talking too much mm-hmm. and not talking enough. But I, I, I just got to give you a lot of credit. As the season went on in the races, I didn't watch all the races, but I saw your comfort level yeah. and confidence level really gain. So congrats Thank on you. that. So the other part of the season, I mean, you know, what have you been doing? You've got junior motorsports um, in, the, in the teams, and congrats on yeah. another championship. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but but what? And, and so with, with Isla and, and Amy and, and and the baby. But what's what's taking up most of your time when you're not in the broadcast booth? We wrote that book. Spent a lot of time writing that. Uh, still, you know, spent a lot of time promoting it. Going to uh, do media day. We did like a media tour in New York, media tour in L.A. Uh, the the Junior Motorsports, pretty much, I don't want to say it runs itself. Kelly is the one that's running that. It's hands-on. She's more hands-on with it than I am. Sure. Um, so, and we got, a, you know, amazing people here to handle that and get that from place to place. Uh, we're trying to grow our business at Whiskey River, which is a restaurant chain. Mm-hmm. We're opening up more of those. Um, I like to open them up in the airport hubs. We got one in Charlotte, Raleigh, and Fort Lauderdale, and and potential to. You do got it. built-in foot traffic. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, you don't even have to worry about it, man. There's going to be people there, but um, that's going really well. I never dreamed that it'd get to where it was. We opened. I wanted to get in the bar business and got in the bar business because I was not very smart because it's not a fun business to be in. It's really competitive and it has a very short well, shelf there's life. A good connection though there it, with you. Back and... when I was in my 30s, there was not so much today. But... I don't mean it that way. Yeah. Though. I just think it makes sense. I think your your fan base. Yeah. Your interaction with beverage companies. Yeah. Uh, and your your my past lifestyle. experience. Yeah. My lifestyle really did fit and and. That the the bar downtown late night, it's a short shelf life. I didn't think we'd be around as long as we have, and we're still grinding and still going, and and it's spurned into these restaurants, um, in these airports, and that's great. So that's going good. We're we're always trying to grow our media arm or whatever you want to call that, uh, promoting ourselves, promoting our partners, promoting our drivers, promoting uh, yeah, the well, brand. Yeah, the yeah. brand. And so we have our 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 podcasts and all those things but that's fun that's a real challenge it's a great challenge smart yeah well i hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit more about dale Earnhardt jr and uh, i'm excited to keep the conversation going around the track